Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. In these videos, I want to show you how to use our new displacement maps that we've just uploaded to the store. <coughs> so you can see here we've got 17 maps that we've just uploaded, and these are all um, displacement maps extracted from our HD head scans. So you can see here there's loads and loads of detail, and then we've got all the nice sort of poor details, um, you know, lips under the eyes. Everything's captured in really high high resolution. These are 16K, 16-bit maps, and you get both the displacement and the color map. So there are two methods to using these maps. Um, I should point out also that these are all standardized to our base mesh, which also comes with, the, um, with each of the downloads. So this makes it really easy to either sculpt with or wrap onto your own model. And those are the two methods that I want to talk about. So the first one we're going to talk about is the wrapping method, whereby we're going to take this mesh, uh, the base mesh with the displacement map applied to it, and wrap it onto a pre-existing sculpt or scan to provide a much higher level of detail. So the model I'm going to be using today is um, a model donated by my good friend Eric Sosa. Um, it's this kind of sort of um, Wolverine-y type character. Really cool. I used them in another tutorial actually. So for the first for the first one, we're going to talk about the wrapping process. And what I'm going to do here is actually wrap the um, base mesh with the displacement onto this. Um, I've done this before in a few other videos, so I'm sure a lot of you know this process already, but um, I'm just going to go through it again just for anyone that hasn't seen it. So the first thing we're going to do is load in the um, base mesh. So we've got all these displacement maps here. These are all the maps that are on the store. So I think I'm going to use this <coughs> male zero one. Um, and We've got base mesh, we've got maps, and I've also got secondary and tertiary actions for Photoshop, which I'll go into a bit later. So in the maps, oh sorry, not the maps, the base mesh, we've just got the super average base mesh here. So just import that into ZBrush. And you can see on this, if I now import one of the texture maps from that same pack, um, ML01 maps, just put, bring the color in so we can see that. flip it for some inexplicable reason and then we'll just apply that there you go so you can see the that map fits perfectly onto that base mesh and if we unwrap the UVs you can see we've got a nice unwrapped version of that and that's the same we can take a look at the displacement as well and let's just load that in just so we can have a look at it Some reason 16 bit maps load a lot quicker into ZBrush than 8 bit maps. Very weird. So there's the displacement applied to that mesh. So, what we want to do is wrap that onto this model. So, first of all, we'll just import the base mesh into this zip tool. And you can kind of see they're, they're pretty close. Um, I might just do a few little tweaks just to align it a little bit better. Scale it up a bit because this guy is quite big. There we go, something like that, that'll do. <coughs> so now we can export both these models. So we'll just export the base mesh. I'll turn this texture off first so it doesn't export that. And we'll export tutorial models wrap and we'll just call that base mesh and now we'll export this head sculpt as well so I'll just do that on our level three it doesn't don't think it needs to be particularly high and wrap call that sculpt and now we'll just load up wrap and we'll load in our two models that base and we'll call this sculpt so let's load the sculpt in first and load the base mesh in and there we go we have them both in wrap now so uh, apologies I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before um, but I'm just going to run through it 
So uh, I'll just turn the wireframe off on the sculpt because we don't really need that on. It doesn't really aid. And on the base mesh, in order to get the details from the uh, map aligned to the face correctly, we want to turn this um, displacement on in here so we can see whether we're replacing the points. Um, you can use either the displacement or you can use the color map. I think actually in this case I'm going to use the color map because that's the thing that I want to really get everything in the right position on this on this sculpt face. So for the color map, uh, wrap unfortunately won't load PSDs, so we'll need to convert that from PSD to JPEG, just as a sort of reference texture. Um, so oh, my Photoshop's gone a bit crazy here. Just open that up. Displacements, mail one, maps, color. I'll just make it smaller as well. It doesn't need to be 16K, so I'll make it 4K. And we'll just save that. Color reference. And we'll just load that into here, load image. Sorry, apologies. I saved that as a PSD again. Here we go. So now we have this base mesh with the color map on it, and we can use the areas of the the albedo to sort of reference and place them where we want them on the sculpt using the the points. So little top tip: if you hold Control, you can flick between viewing only the model that you select. So now we are going to do a um, selection, select point pairs node and plug the base mesh in there and the sculpt in there. And now we're going to click on visual editor and sync the views, always sync the views if the models are in roughly the same position. And I will also turn off the wireframe on this base mesh so I can see just the albedo. So I'm just going to place some points now and sort of position the um, texture where I want it on this mesh. This is particularly important with the lips. You want to really get those in the right position. And again, this color map corresponds directly to the displacement map. So we, um, you know, you know, you could do this with a displacement map as well. I just prefer to do it with the color map because there's slightly easy to read details on the color than there is on the displacement. Displacement can sometimes be a little bit confusing as to what's what. So just place the chin under the chin. Feel free to fast forward this this part. I mean, it's quite boring, and you probably know how to do this. So one thing to mention is um, like the folds on the face, these are all aligned in the displacement maps to, to into the same position. So it's worth putting a few points here just to sort of get them in the right position on your sculpt. You can always tweak them afterwards. And then just we'll do the eyes. Cool, okay, so that should do for the point selection. We don't need too many, I think that's fine. Um, and then we'll just do a geometry selection. Um, select, can't find it, select polygon, sorry. And we're just gonna mask out uh, the inside of the mouth. So I'm just gonna select a loop there and just grow that until it selects all of that mouth bag and then just shrink it back because we don't want to mess around with that really, just kind of exclude that from the wrapping. We could do that with the eyes as well, but I think I'm going to see how they come out. Oops. Right, now we're going to do the wrapping. So just hit alignment and we're going to do wrapping node. Plug in the polygon selection, the point selection, base mesh into the first one, 
Let's go up to the second one. And I'm just going to turn the wireframe on here now so I can see what happens. And just hit wrap. So you can see it's not working particularly well up here. But we can always modify the um, colour and display something up to fix that later. So now that we've got our basic wrap, which actually looks pretty good, there's a few errors here. I'm just going to use the um, the brush tool, which is really handy, especially with the clone option here. So the way this works is we plug the wrap geometry into the geometry node. The reference geometry is your original sculpt, and the source geometry is your original base. And now what we can do with the clone brush is we can clone this geometry back to the same sort of loop positions as the um, the original base mesh, but also maintaining the, um, the form of the underlying wrap, of the underlying sculpt, sorry, which is really, really handy. A lot of people use smooth, but um, this is actually much better. So you see when I do this on the um, eyelids, it doesn't, doesn't warp the shape of the eyes, it just moves the, the loops back into the correct position as they were in the base. And in this area here that I tried, I think I'm just going to move that back and we'll just sort of fudge that around afterwards. Other than that, the wrap looks pretty good. Just a little bit on the ears. Let's clean that bit up a little bit. Same there, it's warped it a little tiny bit. There we go, so that's our wrapping done. So we'll just apply that. And now we can just export that. So you can just right click on these nodes and you can go to save geometry. And we'll just call that wrapped. And now back in ZBrush, we can go onto our base mesh and just turn this off a second. And we'll just import the new wrapped mesh There you go. And now we've got the displacement map is applied to that. And the color map will work as well, obviously, as it did in wrap. So the last thing we want to do is project this onto our sculpt. So we will just subdivide this up once, put our sculpted model in the background, put it set to the highest level. And we'll just do a project on level two. Just using 0 0.02, that seems to be a sort of standard. Kind of works. Very good. And then just go up a level, level three, just do the same again. I sometimes do a morph target before I do these projections, just in case anything screws up. And then up again, I'll go up to level five this time and do this projection. There you go, now we have two models, one the original sculpt and one with the new base mesh applied and onto that base mesh we can apply the displacement map or the colour map. And again I should point out this will work with all of the displacement maps on our store so you can easily import a different displacement map so let's just have a quick look, um, I don't know, male 9, male 8. Let's have a look at this guy, who's he? Uh, I 
I mean, obviously, I'm just applying these as color maps at the moment. Um, this isn't how we do the displacement. I'll show you that in a second. So there you go. So you can you can see that no matter which map you choose, it'll all line up. And you can now apply these as displacement maps in ZBrush. Cool. So applying the displacement map, the next step is we are going to subdivide this model another time, up to six. Ideally, to get the most out of these maps, you need to subdivide this base mesh up to seven. That's the highest sort of level you can get. It's about 50 million polygons. Um, but that will give you all the detail from the maps and all the detail that you would normally get in an HD head scan. So we'll just import a displacement map into the alpha. Let's take male zero one maps, displacement map, alpha, just flip it again for no reason. And in the displacement map, first of all, in the texture map, we want to just make a new texture, just a white one, just so we can see what we're doing. And then in the displacement map, we want to select that displacement. And for the intensity, somewhere 0 0.203, 0 0.204 seems to work quite well. Um, so you can see here, we've now got all the nice details from the displacement applied to our mesh. And we can also turn on the color map as well if we want. So we've got a fully textured, fully detailed model. And to apply that displacement map, um, it's not quite just a case of um, hitting apply displacement because it's going to actually apply it a lot stronger than it looks here. So I'm just going to turn it down to 0 0.003. And what I'm going to do is make a layer. And we'll just call that layer displacement. And now I'm going to sub, oh no, actually, sorry, ignore that. I'm going to delete that layer. And I'm going to subdivide up to seven, just like I said, so we can get as much detail as possible. And now I'm going to make a layer. And call it displacement. And now we will go into our displacement map and apply displacement. Now this is going to look a lot stronger than it does here. Yeah, didn't look that much stronger, to be honest. <coughs> no, it looks okay, actually. But what we can do with this layer, uh, we can now sort of adjust this displacement to be as strong as we want it. So we can go down to 0 0.7. Just gives you options, basically. Maybe 0 0.8. Maybe that might look quite nice. There you go. So now we've got all the really nice details from the displacement map applied to our mesh with a color map. And this doesn't really match up here, but what we could do is we could either move that in Photoshop and um, just sort of using the liquify tool to move these areas around a little bit and help them, you know, fit with the mesh a little bit better. Or we could just sort of paint them out in Photoshop and paint in your own in the, um, in the color map. So I'll just put on a slightly different shader here. I'll just use a satin because it looks quite nice with the details. And I'm just going to modify the material. Just turn the ambient down so we can see all of the skin. So in a nutshell, that's how you apply our displacement maps to your meshes using the wrap method. Um, in the next video, I'm just going to talk very, very quickly about the, the sculpt method. Um, so I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know on Facebook or email or in the comments below, of course.